In this video, I'm going to tell you about N2O emissions and the nitrogen cycle. Like with other greenhouse effect gases, there is nitrous oxide, the concentration of which has increased a lot over the last 50 years due to human activity. We estimate that the N2O concentration has increased and moved from 270 ppm in 1850 to more than 320 ppm nowadays. Now, the concentration is 1,000 times lower than those of CO2, but because it has a uh, strong warming capacity, the contribution made by NTU to the greenhouse effect is still significant. We have reason to believe that N2O corresponds to 8% of the additional greenhouse effect ever since 1850. In order to understand the uh, concentration increase observed for N2O and related emissions, we must look at the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen con constituent on uh, Earth is and two, made of two molecules of nitrogen. This is the main constituent in the atmosphere, but N2 reacts with no other constituent in the atmosphere. Therefore, it's defined as inert. Before the industrial era, the two sources which uh, created reactive uh, nitrogen based on N2, dinitrogen, were those uh, combined with uh, flashes, due to high temperatures, leading to forms like NO or NO2. And more importantly, the second source was due to biological fixation of nitrogen. Natural nitrogen fixation is performed by bacteria in the ocean, cyanobacteria, and on Earth, rhizobia, which live in symbiosis with the uh, root radicular system of uh, pulses and leguminous plants. Now, in the nitrogen cycle, we see the large arrow going from the Earth to the atmosphere. There is denitrification, an essential process in the uh, nitrogen cycle, because it is the only one that allows from reactive nitrogen to come back to uh, inert N2. It plays an essential role in the nitrogen cycle because it closes the loop, it closes the cycle. For more than a century, two more historical, two more sources have added themselves to the historical sources: combustion of fossil fuels due to industrial processes, and another source, the use of the Haber-Bosch process, which is a process to manufacture nitrogen-based fertilizers. This process was invented in the early 20th century, and it is essential because a large part of uh, the uh, development of modern agriculture is based on the invention and the development of this process. However, this new source of uh, reactive uh, nitrogen has uh, changed the uh, nitrogen cycle. Annual sources of uh, reactive nitrogen have increased by 150 teragrams of uh, nitrogen ever since 1850, and entropic sources are equivalent to the natural sources. With 120 teragrams of nitrogen, reactive nitrogen produced per year, the Haber-Bosch process is by far the uh, greatest anthropic source of reactive nitrogen before biological fixation uh, associated with uh, the uh, growth of leguminous plants and energy production. The most part of the reactive nitrogen will be used to fertilize cultures, but sometimes there are leaks in the ecosystem, either directly from the uh, plowed fields or indirectly once nitrogen has been assimilated by the uh, plants and uh, when the 
nitrogen is released. During the circulation in the environment, nitrogen will be transformed with a number of impacts on ecosystems, health and climate. And this is the reason why we introduced a system called nitrogen cascade, considered as the sequential transfer of nitrogen within ecosystems and the consequences uh, on the uh, climatic uh, impact. Here we see, for instance, in yellow, ammonia, nitrate and nitrogen oxide. These emissions can then uh, deposit themselves in the wet or dry form. Nitrates can accumulate in uh, rivers and contribute to eutrophication of water. And finally, there is also nitrogen accumulated in the troposphere. Concentration peaks entail risks for human health and also for ecosystem balances. Now, among the quantity of uh, reactive nitrogen accumulated in the systems, we find also nitrous oxide, N2O. N2O is produced in the environment under two forms, nitrification and denitrification. Nitrification is a process that allows to produce N2 from nitrogen oxide. N2O or nitrous oxide is an intermediate product in the in the nitrification process and denitrification changes the ammonium into nitrate and we have seen that high concentrations of nitrate will lead to uh, eutrophication of rivers and 2 o is a co-product or byproduct of the nitrification uh, process and flows uh, are influenced by uh, temperature, the presence of water, etc. And as is shown in the two graphs, variability of N2O flows and spatial variability, time and space variability are very high. This is difficult to manage because uh, we need to measure N2O uh, released by fields uh, and they're used in the atmosphere. So there is a relative uncertainty regarding the flow of N2O. Now, the most recent review of the situation provided an estimate according to which 75% of N2O emissions come from agri the agriculture and the rest from other activities such as energy, transport, building. In total, seven teragrams of nitrogen per year of emissions, three gigatons equivalent of CO2. Increase of reactive nitrogen in the environment have uh, had other effects than just warming the climate or increasing the uh, tropospheric ozone and CO2 concentrations. There are also cooling effects. Among the cooling effects, we can mention the presence of reactive uh, nitrogen, which involuntarily fertilizes natural ecosystems. To this day, this phenomenon has uh, maintained or even amplified the CO2 sink in the uh, terrestrial atmosphere. According to the last simulations, according to which the sink will be maintained uh, in the next century, because of uh, fertilization happening uh, with N2O does not take into consideration the nitrogen cycle. Therefore, we have reasons to believe that the uh, CO2 sink shown in blue could be decreased if the uh, nitrogen cycle and the uh, associated limitation of this nutrient were taken into consideration. This is what is shown by the purple bars. In conclusion, although uh, reactive nitrogen can have cooling effects on the climate, the detrimental effects of accumulation in the environment should make us think about ways to mitigate this phenomenon. For instance, we could do something about our eating habits, bearing in mind that bovine uh, cattle breeding is a, uh, an important source of uh, N2O emissions, not only in the feed production, but also the fact that uh, they, uh, the animals themselves release uh, waste. We can also think about ways to 
rethink the agricultural sector. A more recent fertilizing policy would allow us to decrease nitrogen leaks into the atmosphere. Finally, concentration of breeding activities in a single area make it more difficult for nitrogen to be recycled. We can see this regionally, for, like for instance in Brittany, when there is a huge concentration of uh, big breeding farms, but also on the global level. So there are solutions. We can reduce the uh, quantity of reactive nitrogen being released in the ecosystems, but this means that we're going to have to make individual changes and collective changes in the way we feed ourselves and we produce our food.